We are about to make a bass popper. With the very techniques we're about to get into, you can make a variety of bass poppers in all sorts of colors. I personally use epoxy to finish my fly because I have yet to discover a UV resin that can hold up to what I would consider to be a professional grade durability specifically for poppers. I love UV resin and I do use it, but bass poppers are a different ball game. If in the future I do find a UV resin that I like, I'll post it in the description below. Starting off with a blank foam popper head, we're going to use a red sharpie marker to color up the mouth. A brighter color is typically used for the mouth, but whatever color you decide to choose, be sure to add a few extra coats to ensure the boldness of the color. Once the mouth is colored up, it's time to add the hook. The popper hook is designed to have a slight kink in the shank to keep the popper head from swiveling around the hook. Slip the hook in the small slit so that it's nice and snug. If you find that the hook is not snug, it's okay because there's an easy way to fix that. Remove the hook from the popper head and secure it to your vise. Now add a medium sized thread like 6 odd to the shank of the popper hook, keeping your thread wraps focused on a small notch on the shank of the hook. Once you've added a small amount of thread, you can whip finish and snip off the excess thread. Now you can take the hook and slip it back into the popper head with the small amount of thread that we added should really help keep the hook snug in the place inside the popper head itself. If you do find that the hook is still loose on the popper head, simply add more thread and try again. Now that you can securely hold your popper without it moving around, we can start coloring it. I typically start with a darker color up on top using a Copic or a Sharpie marker. Once you have colored the top portion of the popper, I typically go back over it a little bit just to give it a few imperfections. I think it makes it look a little bit more real. But once you're finished applying the darker color on top of the fly, it's time to move to a much lighter color. Yellow is what we chose to color the underbody of this popper. Go ahead and color in all the blank space with that yellow color, making sure not to touch any of the olive in the process. Now that all the white space is covered in yellow, we're going to use that lighter color to blend the darker color into the rest of the body. Simply by touching the darker color with the tip of the lighter marker, you can drag that color down, creating a nice blend of yellow and olive. Be sure to do this on both sides of the popper body to make them as equal as possible. When you're finished with this coloring process, you've actually got a done popper. All you would have to do now is stick some eyes on either side and epoxy the head and wait for it to dry. But if you wanted to take it a step further, it's easy to do that. Let me show you how it's done. For this next step, you're going to need a Copic airbrush kit. Simply remove the cap from the condensed air and screw on the airbrush head specific to the Copic marker. Now slip the marker into place and you're ready to do some light stenciling. Now with some fish pattern mesh netting, we're going to cover the side of the popper so that the mesh netting itself is wrapped around the popper head nice and tight. Once the netting is in place, it's time to stencil your popper. Holding the airbrush roughly three inches from your popper will ensure a nice even coat. And once you've sprayed that side of the popper head, remove the mesh and do the same thing on the other side. Once the stenciling process is complete, you can simply add some eyeballs now and epoxy it and have a very nice popper. But we're going to add another step. Adding a little bit of glitter glue on every stenciled dot can really bring your popper head to the next level. Now when you decide to add glitter glue, you do not have to be as detailed as I'm being. You could just simply smother glitter glue around the entire popper head and that itself will add a lot more to your popper. Now with the glitter glue still wet, it's time to add the eyes. Our favorite kind of eyes to use on a popper are 3D frog eyes. But really, you can use any kind of eyes you would like. Simply place the eyes on both sides of the popper on the upper portion of the head. When you think you have them in place, turn the popper head so that it's facing you to make sure that the eyes are even on both sides. If everything is as it should be, you need to set your popper aside and let the glitter glue dry 100% before you move on. And once it is dry, it's time to add the epoxy. We have chosen to mix up a 30 minute epoxy to give us ample time to work with the popper. Once your epoxy is mixed up, it's time to apply it to the popper head. Wearing a latex glove, we're going to dip our finger in the mixed epoxy and start applying it heavily to the popper head. Be sure when applying the epoxy to turn your popper in every direction to ensure that you are getting epoxy on every section of the popper head itself. 
Once the popper head is completely covered in epoxy, it's time to let it dry. Simply place the popper head on a turner and let it turn until completely dry. Once it is dry, we need to check the eye of the popper. A lot of times when we apply the epoxy, we get a little bit in the eye. If that happens, it's okay. It's really easy to remove. Simply take your bobkin and put it over an open flame until it's nice and hot. When you've got the bobkin up to temperature, simply poke it into the eye of the hook to melt away any of the hard epoxy. With the remaining epoxy that's kind of stuck to the middle of the eye, it's easy to just pick that out with the rest of the bodkin. And once that's complete, it's time to start tying up our popper. With the popper hook secured to your vise, it's time to secure your thread to the hook, wrap it to the bend of the hook, and then snip off the excess thread. The first thing we're going to add is a tail. The tail itself is made out of your favorite kind of flash material. Select a fair amount of flash, snip the ends so that we can secure it nice and cleanly on the shank of the hook. Once your tail material is nice and secure, you want to snip off the ends so that they're slightly longer than the shank of the hook. Once the tail is snipped, it's time to add the legs. For the legs, we're going to be using saddle hackle. Trim off all the webbing material of the saddle hackle so that we're left with a nice crispy fibers. Now measure the legs so that they're slightly longer than the tail. And then bear the stem of the hackle so we're left with a portion of the hackle that's longer than the tail but still have enough of the stem to secure down to the shank of the hook. Do that to two pieces of saddle hackle and then secure them down on one side of the shank to create one of the legs for the popper. When that's complete, do the same thing to two more pieces of saddle hackle and then secure them down to finish the legs on your popper. When the legs are nice and secure, secure down the rest of the material by bringing your thread forward and then take your thread and bring it back to the bend of the hook again. Now it's time to bulk up the body of the popper. Take a few more saddle hackle feathers, preferably ones that match the head of the popper. Bear the stem and snip off the excess. Now we're going to take each of the stems and line them up so that we have all the colors that we desire pinned together. Now take the stems and secure them down on the shank of the hook, starting from the bend of the hook, and then wrap forward and leave your thread right behind the head of the popper. Once your thread is out of the way, you can begin to wrap the hackle fibers forward until you've reached your thread. Once you do reach your thread, secure down the hackle fibers. Once the hackle fibers are nice and secure, snip off the excess and add a few extra security wraps. Now it's time to add the legs. We're going to take three sexy legs and wedge them underneath the back part of the body. Now take your thread and crisscross over the top of the legs both ways to ensure the legs are nice and secure on top of the shank of the hook. When everything's nice and secure, it's time to whip finish. It can be a little tricky getting your whip finish tool around all the materials, but once you do, snip off the excess thread. The last thing we're going to do to this fly is snip the leg material down to size. And once the legs are snipped down to your desired length, you have yourself a bass popper.